before we got on camera. Yeah. I told you one of my biggest problems is it's hard to say no. I understand. Well, during the course of putting the engine together, a friend of mine named Jerry Cannis in Rome, Georgia, uh, told me, he said, hey, you know what would be great on that engine as long as it is? I said, what? He said, one of the old Ford inline four barrels. <laughs> I said, yeah, but that's kind of like hen's teeth. Where would you find one of those? Right. And he said, well, let me work on that. So uh, a few weeks later, Jerry calls me and says, I've located a carburetor you can use. I said, oh, yeah. So he sends me a carburetor. Have you, have you ever seen a Ford in line? No, not in person. Okay. Well, today's your lucky day. I love it. Disassemble. I'll get to that in a few minutes. But that is a real Ford inline four barrel carburetor. Unbelievable. And it was developed during the late 60s, early 70s to run in the Trans Am series. Right. Uh, one of the rules when it started out was uh, competitors may run any carburetors, plural. So on the Boss 302 Mustangs that competed in the Trans Am series, they had two of those with a with a larger throttle board. It was 1,440 CFM, an individual runner, one per cylinder. And uh, that lasted a little while. It's no, no joy. We can't do that. So right. they changed the rules to one full barrel carburetor, <clears throat> excuse me, not to exceed 900 CFM. So they built that carburetor with a smaller Venturi, which flows 875 CFM. Oh, well, I put that one on the car and we dynoed it with it, and it made uh, just a little over 600 horsepower with the one carburetor. Yeah. And uh, the first time we dynoed it, we had it on it, it made a little over, just a little over 600. And then we put the, the Hollies on it, and it made, put two Hollies on it, and it made 697. Right. I believe is right. That was at Keith Dorton's. And uh, we we had a rough day that day. We were going there with the, I had another manifold with six Evinrude carburetors on it. <laughs> of course you did. Everybody's got to have it. So, have you ever seen an Evinrude carburetor? <laughs> no. I mean, I, not, not in that They're kind side of, dress. Not, not in that kind of use, no. They're side dress. Yeah. And, yeah. and it looked cool as hell on that thing. Yeah. I mean, they really, they really yeah, I bet so. But... Uh, Hey, Mom. <laughs> we had a we had a lot of trouble getting the fuel curve kind of calmed down on it. Yeah. I, I had no idea. I never I never taken an uh, individual run a carburetor and put it on a common plenum before, but it gets extremely rich on a common plenum manifold, and right. and I had no way to load it here, and I had worked on the idle circuit, and I got it where it would idle, and I'd mess with the intermediate enough I could rev it up to about thirty two hundred RPMs, and it wouldn't. It wouldn't cut up, but struggle, yeah. But on the dyno, as soon as it went past about three thousand RPMs, it would get so rich it just shut off. Yeah. Well, after one attempt at that, we pulled that manifold off and put the second manifold on and put the inline on it and got a pull. And then when we did that, we had a, a crack in the cylinder head and it started spewing water out into the uh, valve cover area. Right. So. He said, what do you want to do? I said, let's change the oil and drop the water out of it. We make a pull before the the uh, horsepower monster guy got there. I can't think of his name right now, but he's the one that videoed it. Yeah. So the, the pull that was on the horsepower monster website was the first pull it ever made with those carburetors on there, right out the box. Wow. It was cold. Yeah. Uh, we had 28 degrees of timing in the engine. <laughs> I mean, it was it was fat and rich, just yep. like you want your sponsor. Yep, yep, <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, uh, so we made that pull and it made a uh, 692 or 97, something like that. Wow. And uh, we brought it home and got that leak repaired and and built a box style manifold like it's on it now. Yeah. And put another carburetor on it. Made a little cam change went to Gary Dingler's shop the next time up in uh, Washington, Georgia. And uh, it made 872 at the end of the day. Wow. Yep, every, every, every pool we made, Gary said, well, 
let's take some time, let's put some time in it, or let's take some jet out of it. And every time he suggested a change, it helped, and yeah. it made it made 15, 20, 15, 20, 25 yeah. every, every time. time, every time in it. At eight seventy two, I said, Let, "Let's let's stop." Let's he said, "I believe I believe there's nine in it." I said, "Yeah, but right now it cranks and it runs yes, and it can go sir. home." <laughs> so it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, I had a lot of help getting that far on the engine. Now, I mean, uh, uh, I had some friends in California that were very instrumental in getting the right pieces to get it together. Like yes. uh, uh, that was before Bobby died, Bobby Johansson, and and he helped me get the uh, crank made at Henry Velasco. Right. And Bobby built the rods for it, and uh, before Arius died, the pistons came from them. Yeah. And Donnie Johansson uh, ground the camshaft. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, that's why I'm here, just to, <laughs> just to hear these stories. So. <laughs>